this wave rolling off of Africa has the best model signal we've seen so far this season for development. And I'm watching it closely for our friends in the Caribbean and potentially the Southeast U.S. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kagas, and I'm here to separate the trash from the truth when it comes to the weather. I'm also keeping my eye on the Gulf for that weak system sliding through but bringing heavy rain, and then also a few more waves rolling through the Caribbean through the course of this video. I'll have the chapters in the description if you want to click along. So here is our wave. We've had a couple of juicy ones roll off, and they've met a very, very quick demise with all of the dust that is out there. There is one thing that I have my eye on there that might make this one getting ready to roll off a little bit different, though. It might be able to kind of fend off some of the hostile conditions still in the Atlantic. I don't think this is the runaway flurry of activity just yet. Let me show you the dust versus the tropical waves that are rolling off. So we have five waves four of them i have highlighted one is moving through the central caribbean as we speak we have another wave here that's the first yellow circle another weak one behind it again there's just a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity very unorganized another one rolling off of africa as we speak and then the big juicy one right on through here as these complexes of thunderstorms develop over africa and then roll off again we're getting into that cabo verde season where we see the long range storms work the way across the atlantic still and I want to be clear about something. The Atlantic is not that conducive for development. You see all the brown there on your screen. There's a lot of dry, dusty air. We'll talk about why I think that one, that last one I have highlighted, has a shot through the course of this video. I first want to show you the model look here. This is the European Ensemble, and this is, again, no doubt the strongest look that we have seen. This, by the way, happening for the first couple of days of August, so there's still a lot of time to watch to see how the environment shakes out, but these are the ensembles, and here is that entity. All these different L's and lines represent different ensemble members. The more L's you see, the higher confidence that we have that something may try and develop. So the European Ensemble, very bullish. I'll tell you the GFS Ensemble is certainly not as bullish, but you see that big bullseye of uh, that cluster of L sliding through. And taking this further out, that was uh, July 30th, by the way. And then as we move out to the first couple of days of August, this is August 2nd, August 3rd, you see those L's moving towards the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and then maybe potentially closer to the Southeast United States. I'm in no way, shape, or form putting anybody on alert. We're doing this video because there is some strong model guidance suggesting development. The thing that, again, I want to be clear about, the Atlantic isn't super conducive to supporting tropical development. The only reason why this is worth watching is because of something known as a Kelvin wave, we talk about the MJO a lot being a large-scale rising motion that goes around the globe every 30 to 60 days. On a smaller scale, we have something called a Kelvin wave. So let me back this train up just a little bit, and we're looking over here. This is the Atlantic Basin. Where you see green, that is rising motion anomalies. To get thunderstorms and certainly tropical systems to develop, you need air to rise. So as this little Kelvin wave slides through, that's going to be on July 29th. We're going to send that into motion. You see that green get a little more bullish right down there in the main development region. Typically, after one of these waves pass through, about one to two days after, that's when the environment becomes conducive. That tropical wave that will become a tropical wave rolling off of Africa it's going to meet up with that. So it's going to be in a small window of favorability. Again, by and large, most of the Atlantic is rejecting these waves. I mean, you can see it for yourself. And I want to show you that, that while we have four or five tropical waves out here, there is little fanfare, little to no fair fanfare with those coming through. It's just something to watch here because it's a juicy wave. And there's also some background state to back up some of the aggressive, at least relatively speaking, model guidance coming out. So I wanted to show you that, and uh, might be something to look towards the early stages of April, again, those first couple of days, to see if that wave fends off all of that dust and the not very conducive conditions out there. But again, just a little bubble of favorability. Also, a little 
even smaller bubble of favorability is this guy here. This is the one we've been, tra we've been tracking for days. It has the Hurricane Center highlight on it. Flare up of thunderstorms as of about 7 o'clock on your Thursday, July 24th. Some heavy rain moving through Louisiana and then eventually heading towards Texas. Again, tropical development with this is unlikely, although watch the future radar here and you'll notice a little curl towards the very end. It tries... And then you see that spin go over Mexico. I'm going to replay that again. I have it sped up so you can kind of see that curl a little bit better. Watch as you put that back into motion, sliding through, and then the spin go over South Texas and eventually into uh, parts of Mexico. Obviously, we don't want any more moisture in southern Texas after what has happened with all the flooding on several occasions. Uh, but that looks like where the brunt of the moisture is going. It doesn't look like, for the most part, that that is going to transition into or translate into some heavy rain, um, at least San Antonio and points west. But we do have the heavy rain toward Port Lavaca, Galveston, Houston, one to three inches of rain. And again, a lot of times these models will uh, undersell tropical moisture so we can see isolated higher amounts as you get that pinwheel moving right on through. So we had one way of go through. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, if you are finding this informative and want to join the Just Weather Garbage Crew, I call ourselves that because we hunt down the misinformation and we turn it into science on whether you need to be worried about something or not, or if you just want to hang out and talk about the weather, you've come to the right place if you're with me, post in the comments where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing there. Tropical satellite radar. Again, this is a satellite-derived radar since we don't have radar in the middle of the ocean. Um, that's really all there is of the tropical wave that brought us rain in the Windward Islands yesterday. It continues to slide to the west. It's bringing some thunderstorms um, into central, the central Caribbean around Jamaica. There's this other little flare-up, a separate entity, bringing some heavier rain to uh, Central America, Nicaragua, Honduras. Eventually, that's going to move into Belize. So here we go, Thursday night. Uh, one of those other tropical waves. Again, that's just pretty much like a naked swirl right now. There's not a ton of moisture with it. It is going to bring some heavier rain back. And I have kind of the wide view of the Caribbean here because we have that tropical wave on the western side and a new one entering. This is not the juicy one, by the way. So these are those weak ones that are leading. That's still way too far out for any kind of um, any kind of uh, certainty on anything or any kind of impact. There's 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, and we have some heavy rain again coming back towards St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Martinique, Grenada, Barbados as well with that other wave sliding through. So another round of heavy rain. You guys know the drill in the Caribbean. You don't need to have a tropical storm or a hurricane to be impactful. These waves can certainly bring some heavy rain. We'll slip back to the west side to show the initial tropical wave. And there's that heavy rain into Belize, into the Yucatan, and continuing into Central America. Okay, so point blank to go back to what we talked about before is I'm watching it closely. I have my eye on it. Some models are more bullish than others. Again, strength to be determined, if anything, at the very least, Northeast Caribbean will have to watch out for uh, some heavy rain by the 3rd or 4th, anywhere from August 2nd to the 4th. Nonetheless, there's a strong signal, but with that signal coupled with the passage of the Kelvin wave, it has my intention. The one thing that I want to be clear about is I keep on saying, and this is kind of a, a wait and see, the Atlantic is not favorable for tropical development. I don't think this is the start of a flurry of activity coming through the Atlantic. I think I said that earlier in the video, but I just want to be extra special clear that once this little Kelvin wave, this little kind of shot in the arm to this tropical wave slides through, it's going to go back to being super unfavorable again, probably through the middle of September. So these are these little flare-ups that can often come in between active periods in a hurricane season. So again, just want to be clear about that. I have my eye on it, but it could really go either way. And it's going to be interesting to see what wins out the overall large scale, not very favorable Atlantic or this little bubble of favorability that kind of meet up with the tropical wave to help enhance its way across the Atlantic and maybe into the Northeast Caribbean or Southwest Atlantic. 
We're watching it closely. Post in the comments what you think. Be safe out there. We'll catch you next time.